Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another lesson on uh, Deuteronomy 28:68, And so this is an extremely powerful verse, you know, in the Bible because it contains incredible amount of information, you know, and a, a huge chunk of human history, recent human history, and a huge amount of devastation. And um, who's the, um, who's responsible for it? Okay. And so we learn many, many things in this one verse that is absolutely powerful, you know, and important and is part of my testimony, according to Revelation 19.10. Okay, and so we have a lot of people on YouTube who run around, you know, bounce around here and there from hangout to hangout, but uh, they don't have a valid testimony, you know, and then when we present one, they start getting into like, oh no, it's not this and all that. So then they become experts all of a sudden, okay, but they don't have a valid testimony themselves and they don't understand what Deuteronomy 2868 is, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again, you know, as I've done in the past. But, um, you know, that's why, again, why I'm very, very confident in what I teach because no one else has a valid testimony, you know, and then can teach the entire Bible. And so if you ask an everyday average person, even a quote unquote truther on YouTube, they won't have an explanation for Deuteronomy 28, 68. They'll be like, whatever, <laughs> no big deal. Um, maybe happen, I don't know, not literal. They'll just make up stuff literally on the spot. Revelation nineteen ten, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so my God, okay, is telling me what exactly Deuteronomy 20 and 68 is, okay, and how it's been fulfilled, okay? And so if you disagree, then you are Antichrist. You are against my Christ. You're anti my Christ, okay? And so good luck to you, you know? Then if what I teach is not true, then it doesn't matter, okay? It's not going to affect you in any way. And, um, it will affect me negatively, you know, because I'm teaching things incorrectly. But if it is correct, then we're on different teams, okay? And then there's a chasm that separates us. And then, you know, again, good luck to you, you know, but um, uh, I'm not meeting anybody halfway because this is an incredibly powerful truth and has so many different things in this one verse that are incredibly important. And um, the numerology also is important. Starting with that, Deuteronomy 2868, you add two plus eight is 10. 6 plus 8 is 14, okay, 24, 44, okay, that number seems to keep coming up, you know, and so these verses that have 14 and 44 in it, they're only for God's elect to understand, okay, if you literally took all the verses and then it would have the encoding in it, that's how God assigns truth, okay, only certain people are allowed to read certain verses and then his elect are going to understand the whole book, okay, the volume of the book, okay, and then there are other people who come by my channel and they're not allowed to have an understanding on this, like LOP, for example, because we were talking about this and he's like, nah, I don't know, nah, he, I don't know, and whatever, he'll just make up stuff, okay? Because he desperately wants Christ to be lighter skinned, okay? And so these people are Satanists, okay? They're antichrist. They're definitely anti my Christ, okay? And that's the purpose of this lesson. But, um, you know, just know that, okay? And so there's no, there's not a single truth that I teach that I'm willing to be like, yeah, it's not important. They're all important, okay? And if you don't find them important, then get the hell away from my channel, okay? And I don't care what happens to you, and I, it's no, no hard feelings, okay? But, um, you know, you're against my God, okay? And then you're obviously against me as well. So, but um, this truth is very, very precious and incredibly important because of, again, all the things that are in here. Deuteronomy 28, 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, Okay. Where's Egypt? Okay. Again, but with ships this time. Okay. So ancient Egypt, which is um, a prophecy in Genesis that was um, fulfilled, you know, during that uh, time of enslavement for the Israelites, Genesis 15, 13 to uh, 14. And he said to Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Okay. And so... Genesis 15 plus 13 is what, 28, okay? And so just know that that means that we're, we can go back to Deuteronomy 28, you know, and get some understanding, okay? What is it talking about when it says again, but with ships, okay? And it's talking about Egypt, okay? The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. So that's happened, that has to, has to happen once, but it's, it says again, but with this time ships, okay? And so what, they, they just, they didn't need ships the first time. Okay, it's not funny, but like, no, this has to be a different place, okay? And then we get an understanding of what that is in Revelation 11, okay? 
um, what that place is in the last days. Okay, and so this is why all these things in the Bible are linked. Okay, and so you have to understand the volume of the book. And I haven't seen anybody, but uh, people seem to get really smart. Okay, when they click that link, okay, they become a genius all of a sudden. Revelation eleven eight, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. Okay, so that place, if you look up the name of it, it's not going to be Sodom. Oh, it's, oh, Egypt. Okay, yeah, it's over there, you know, in Africa. No, it's spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Okay, and it's spiritually where our Lord was crucified. That word applies to that as well. Okay, and so that gives us a clue about where these two witnesses are going to be. Okay, and it's very clear that they're going to be in America. Okay, so America is modern day Egypt. Okay, and so this group in Deuteronomy 28 it says the Lord shall bring thee. So it's going to happen. And why would God go through this, this much detail if it doesn't end up happening, if they chose the righteous path? We're clearly, they've clearly gone down this path, the Israelites, okay? Because there's a tremendous amount of evil on earth, okay? And the entire earth is lawless, okay? And so we know that the that they've chosen this, okay? This path, okay, by their um, lack of interest in keeping the law. So it's a judgment, it's a penalty. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, but with this time with ships, okay? And so we have to look at a group who've come to America on ships, okay? Who are receiving this punishment. So they're obviously Israelites, okay? Uh, also because of what Genesis fifteen thirteen, 13, um, and he said unto Abraham, know of a certainty that thy seed shall be a stranger, okay? And so this is a judgment for uh, Israelites. Um, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And so those are going to be their enemies. Okay. And so we're not supposed to go along with that place. Because look at what they do to the Israelites. Okay. They didn't stop becoming their enemies. After a while, you know what? Okay, we're done with being their enemy. We're going to be friendly to you guys. Okay. Are you kidding me? And so if you're an Israelite... However, we got here, even if we, we are one of the, the mixed multitude or um, scattered um, in Deuteronomy 28, 64, then um, we still understand that the leadership here in modern day Egypt is an enemy to the Israelites against God. And the Bible says never trust that enemy. OK, so we're not supposed to go along with anything that they do. OK, now that we know that we could be Israelites. OK, and so whether our ancestors came here on slave ships or not, because, again, in Deuteronomy 28, 64, it says that there's another group of Israelites that are going to be scattered and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of earth unto the other. Okay. So there's a group that are going to be scattered. And then there's a going to group that are going to be here as a result of this enslavement, you know, and this punishment here in Deuteronomy 28, 68. And then there's another group in Arzareth. Okay. In a distant region. So that summarizes where the Israelites are. Their power is going to be dis distributed. Okay. They're going to be speckled. And then a concentration of them are going to be in bondage, okay, which is what Egypt is, a house of bondage. And then there's a group honoring God's laws, okay. And so that's that's what's going on, okay. And we know that in the last days because there's proof of that, that that group is still in Arzareth in the Middle East. We know that this is happening here, okay. And then we know just by the testimony of people of all different nationalities that, that there are Israelites everywhere, okay because they're truthers that look like all different, like real truthers, okay, not these actors. But, um, so that's evident in just what we see, okay, and then we, what we can trust in the scriptures in Second Ezra about the remnant. But, um, so, um, thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and, and bond women, and no man shall buy you. What's that term, buy you? Uh, it's kana, okay, H7069. And so if you look at that, um, you know, what that means to get, acquire, create, buy, or possess one of the sub definitions of God or originating, creating, redeeming his people. Okay. And so no man is going to be able to redeem you. That's what it's saying. Okay. God is going to have to redeem that group from that place, the North country, which is what's called in Jeremiah 31, eight. And so. This is going to be the, the headquarters, the focus of salvation, okay, in the last days, which I believe this event is going to happen in, uh, any day now. But um, so Deuteronomy 28, 68, just in one verse, packs a mighty punch, okay, as a numerology, okay, lets us know who's going to understand it, and then tells us that that enslavement, the transatlantic slave trade, was a form of Bible prophecy. And who did it? The Lord shall do it, okay? So God did it, 
okay? It's not it's not Esau and, and all the other the the Hamites and blaming all these other dummies in the in the verse itself who did it, and the Lord shall bring thee, okay? And so that's why again why we know that a lot of these people even teaching this correctly are actors, okay? Because they don't understand that God did that, okay? And He did that as a result of their uh, in, in, in disinterest in keeping the law, okay, or breaking God's laws, and so it's a righteous judgment, okay? And so just know that, okay? And so that's exactly what the Bible says. It literally says it here. So um, that's who any reasonable person should have their quote-unquote beef with, okay? And I don't see that. So then I, I know that the people that were on these ships are also actors because you're not supposed to trust your enemies and go on those slave ships, okay? And so again, all these people ultimately are experiencing judgment and then they're doing what God tells them to do, okay? But we're not supposed to be like these people and trust our enemies and go on a slave ship and do this and do other things that they want us to do. No, we're just like, hell no. We'll take death before that. If we can't move like the other group in, in Arzareth, then we, we take death like all the others have throughout human history. Christ is a supreme example. There's too many to name in the Bible from beginning to end. Okay, and so that's our position. But um, anybody out there, if you don't believe that this is fulfilled by the so-called Negroes, and, uh, and the Israelites coming to America, the quote-unquote Western world, then what, what is this, okay? For LOP and other people out there who are, who are geniuses, right, about the Bible. And so what, what is this referring to then? What is your testimony, okay? And so just know that, okay? And so Genesis 15, 13 is also layered, okay, for people to understand. This 400 years happened twice, okay, in ancient Egypt and now in modern day Egypt. And I believe the elect were sealed on January 1st, 2020, to signify the fact that that 400 years is over now, okay? At the end of 2019, which is the, the first year that they were brought here, 1619, 2019, it ended, okay? And then I was sealed on January 1st, 2020, I believe, more and more strongly every day. And so this 400 years happened twice, okay? God will do the same thing, okay? And it's a layered prophecy. And then it also proves that here, verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve, then I will judge. So God's going to judge America. Okay, Mystery Babylon, Revelation 17 and 18. And afterward, they shall come up with grave substance. Okay, and so that mirrors what's going to happen now, you know, in the last days. Okay, the exact same thing has played out. Okay, the Israelites were brought into another Egypt, but this time on ships. Okay, spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Okay, and then uh, they're going to be afflicted for 400 years. Okay, and that ended, I believe, the day that the elect were sealed. Okay, because now they have the truth. Then now, now they're free, okay? And so they're no longer enslaved because the truth has set them free, okay? The group that was actually sealed. And then now we're waiting to be taken out, okay? Out of this place, okay? And so that's amazing, okay? And so Deuteronomy 28, 68 is absolutely foundational to my teaching, okay? You can't just take it out, you know, like in Jenga or whatever and just everything's, no, the whole thing collapses, Okay? And I was told that by God, okay? So if you haven't been told that, then just shut up, okay? Or if you've been told something different, then we have a God that's now competing and you're Antichrist, you're against my God and I'm against yours and we'll see who wins ultimately in the sky. But, um, you, you know, you need to go figure out what that is. If anybody does not believe that Deuteronomy 28, 68 is referring to the transatlantic slave trade and bringing a group here to America, okay? Modern day Egypt. Okay, again with ships. And so that also tells us very, very clearly who the Jews are and then gives us a strong, strong sense of what Christ looks like. Okay, and then also very importantly, what the two witnesses will look like. And so Deuteronomy 28, 68, one verse is incredibly important. Okay, it's almost an entire book in and of itself, just that one verse. Okay, because of how much devastation is that one verse describing, you know. And, and summarizing in uh, human history and still, you know, until our time now, okay? And so it's absolutely foundational. So if anybody does not accept that Deuteronomy 28, 68 is exactly what I just said it is, then you're Antichrist. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.